Great to have you here. I'm back here on the breakfast on Floss TV Africa. It's coming home. It's coming home. That's uh, a lot of the conversations yesterday were centered around those statements or that phrase uh, with the England versus Denmark game at the World Cup. We're going to be listening to a post-match interview with uh, the both coaches, the coaches of both teams, England and Denmark, and of course the captain of the English uh, national team. And right after that, we will be introducing Wally Scott here on the breakfast. But first of all, let's watch this. Well, I mean, we've got uh, one more game to go, you know. What a fantastic tournament it's been so far. Different type of win today. We had to, we had to dig deep against a very good Denmark side. And, um, yeah, we, we got the job done. So, of course, what an opportunity being at Wembley uh, for the final of our first European Championship as a, as a nation. So, um, I mean, we'll enjoy this one. But, of course, the focus turns straight on to, to Sunday. We recover well and then try and prepare for that. These games are about character, they're about digging in, about belief, uh, and we definitely have that as a squad, so this will just give us more going into Sunday now. Denmark have had an incredible tournament. I mean, I've got to give them huge credit. I thought they made it really difficult for us tonight. They pressed us so well, scored a fabulous goal. The boy's a, a super player. And, um, but I think on the balance of play, you know, when, when you look at the number of saves you forced the goalkeeper to make and long periods of the game where I felt we were... The, the biggest threat, I, th I think we deserved it. And um, yeah, for our country, I mean, I, I've, I've not heard this new Wembley like that ever. And uh, to be able to share that with everybody and share it with everybody at home is uh, very special. First of all, congratulations uh, to England uh, with the final. Um, first of all, I want, I, well, primarily I want to to congratulate my my colleague uh, Gareth. Um, I followed what the FA has done strategically, and um, and especially how Gareth has led, led this um, this team for a number of years now. How he works in the, in the with the young players, how he gets involved, and how he behaves himself in uh, with with the values he's, uh, he has, and how he represents and communicates. Um, is outstanding. So, congratulations, Gareth. I think you do. Uh, you are doing a, a great job in a in a difficult um, in a difficult job. So, congratulations. All right. So let's now introduce Wally Scott, our sports correspondent, reporter, and it's just amazing to see sports with Wally Scott, isn't it? Welcome. You like the phrase. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you are the one who likes the phrase. Interesting. So yes, just give us a feel of what you know you know, people in England might be going through right now, the excitement they might be feeling. First time since 1966, about 55 years since, I mean, it's just, it seems amazing, remarkable, isn't it? I don't think it's, it's an excitement in England. It's euphoria. Wow. As in, they've never been near it since 1966. Wow. And um, don't forget that um, Nigerians are, it's easily affordable and available for us to actually see the English Premier League. So we're always having this feeling that uh, the English Premier League is the best in the world, the players are the best in the world, but that's not true, really. And um, it's good. It's England. Um, Nigerians love the Premier League. If it's, uh, any Nigerian, is either it's Chelsea or it's Arsenal or it's Man U, you know, so it's good. Um, and will the cup come home? Like you said earlier, football is coming home. Is it going to home to England? I doubt it. So, so let, let's start with, uh, I want you to also I mention, why, why do you think you know, they have been successful this time? Is it because other, other teams have um, you know, been a little weak? Teams that you know, a lot of people expected will make it really, really far this time, you know, fell off. Um, so is, is that the reason? Or do you think the English team this time, Southgate has really, really done a lot of work? I don't, I, I don't think we've seen an English team, the three Lions, as good as this in a long time. They've got fantastic players. And um, Gareth Southgate has been open to criticism. You know, most other English coaches are very proud, whether they are English or not. They are proud. They will listen to your... But, you know, English players come out. Rio Ferdinand, Gary Neville, Phil Neville, Paul Gascoigne. And they're actually saying, this is wrong, guy. And he's listening to them. And I think that helped him out. Because um, everybody thought that he was going to take a different person to these heroes, maybe a Jadon Sancho, who is all English. But he's, he, he's obviously looking like he's depending more on Bukayo Saka, yeah. who is causing too many problems for defenders in this competition so far. And he has gotten them here. 
So I think he's listening to criticism. I think um, it's good for him. And um, England is in the finals. They've not been this close to anything, even this cup here. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I was, it's, you know? it makes me want to ask you, apart from this point you mentioned, what are the factors you think they got right this time around that they didn't in the past 55 years? I, I, I really can't say. English, the English team has always had good players. You know, they've always had good players. Why they don't get to the top, I do not know. Some have blamed this on um, inconsistency. Some have said they just lose it when they lose focus, when they get near it. I don't know. But this is a regular English team. They've got fantastic players in this team. This is a team that could have afforded to leave Jamie Vardy at home. Yes. You know, they've got a full fold, you know, he's only 17 or 18 years old. You know, they are not, this is a team that is not afraid to use young players. You know, teenagers, they will use them if they are good enough, you know. And this is a, an English team that actually agreed to use regularly a dark-skinned a, a dark boy, a black boy, if I'm to use that word, who has a Yoruba name, Bukayo Saka, and he's, he's the man who is causing problems for defenders in this team. How far will English go, England go, yeah. will be the question now. Yeah. This Italian team... Is, is the most disciplined Italian team anybody has seen since 1917. Mm. That's how far. This is the most disciplined Italian team. The, this Italian team have two players in their defense, Cialini and Bonucci. They've played together for over 11 years. They've gone through criticism. They've been criticized. They've been insulted. They've been praised. There they are, two best defenders in the world right now played together for 11 years. The problem with the Italian team, the problem that England will have is there are 11 players on the field of play. This particular Italian team have seven players playing in one team, Juventus. They play together, week in, week out. So you feel that bond would have an, would have an I've effect? I've always said it on my shows. If you go and play 11 players who play in Ogba or Obalende, and they play regularly, every day, for say five years, and you bring in the super egos who play in different leagues. If, even if they win that match, they will sweat. So you feel that so, synergy, there's always the a ball, that they understand each other? The synergy is always there. You know, This is an Italian team that have done very badly in the past. People like me and other pundits have, they didn't give Italy a chance. Hmm. Final scale, no. We, no. we didn't even think Italy would cross the group stage. But this is a team that has been building over the years. They've played together for so long. And like I told you, two defenders in the Italian team have played together for 11 years. There's, How will they don't know each other? Uh, there's, um, of course, other teams that you know, people had expectations. Let's, let's also just briefly talk about them. Uh, the ones who fell off, you know, the Germany's, the, you know, Spain, um, you know, Belgium even, you know, which has been very, very impressive in the last couple of years. Um, where do you think that these, you know, what happened with these teams? And why, Belgium, no. Let's go once again, Belgium. Germany at a point did what the Italians did, you know? They were building players from scratch, and they won the World Cup that year. Yes. Italy have done something almost impossible. They've built one person. They'll just face one person. Ciro Immobile, they face him. Insigne, they face him, you know? And they work on him constantly. You are part of it. See, it's being able to identify one player and say, you are part of my team. And then you are building a team one by one. And Italy has done that. We know where Ciro Immobile will play in the next match for Italy. We know where Insigne is go going to play. We know it's going to be Bonucci and Chiellini at the back in defense. We knew that from last year. So this is a team that has been built for a while. Even at that, Pundits didn't give Italy a chance. Everybody is talking about England. The English press is the only hype they can hype. They will hype the Englishman like he's Superman. And that's what we'll be living on. But surprisingly, despite, forget the hype. Don't hit the, 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 yeah. the player, hit the game now, you know? Forget the hype. England does have a very good team. Is there, is there, any, is there any role that experience has, um, because that we, 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 we saw an era where there was um, an Alan Shera English team. We went to the Peter Crouch, we went to the Wayne Rooney, you know, the Beckham era. Th those were different eras of the English team. Um, in, in the current team, is there any player that you know they look out for based on experience, who's there based on experience, or this is just a young, fresh, um, energetic team? I won't say they are young. I'll just say that um, these guys have a point to prove. 
everybody looks out to Harry Kane, for example, who's the capital team. Yes. Um, you look to Harry Maguire, who is an elderly player. But I've never seen an English team that has got flair. You know, in Nigeria, yes. when, you want to, when you go and watch ball, you want to look for the guy who can dribble, yes. who can clap and all that. England needs to have that. They're just, they're just straight jacketed, trained players. <laughs> play, pass, play, pass. But this team, practically every player in this English team can dribble, has flair, has skill, unlike most English players. You know, you're looking at a, a, an English team that has got Bukayo Saka, who can carry a bike when he gets the ball and run, and you can't catch it. You know, Harry Kane can dribble, can score goals and all that. Harry Maguire can hold the ball, he's so confident. This is the most confident English team we've seen in like 25 years. Amazing. Fantastic. So, Wally Scott, I want us to take a look at the Harry Kane extra time goal that basically sent them into, you know, the, this Euro victory now. Um, how do you analyze that goal? Don't put me in trouble. Everybody says that wasn't the penalty first off. And then he missed it the first time again. And then he scored the goal eventually. And another thing again I want to discuss is the fact that England have played practically all their matches in Wembley, except for the one against Ukraine in Rome. And everybody so said that was, a, that, that was a plus factor for them. Because one, the they're advantage. used to the pitch. Yes. Two, the match is really, really, really available to their fans to be there. Yes, 60,000 fans. You know, you know, so um, everybody has said that the Wembley factor has been a plus for them. The only match I guess they played at this stage was in Rome against Ukraine. They've played practically every other match in Wembley on their home soil, which, of course, should be a plus for them, you know? And secondly, um, people are saying if it's Wembley, of course, the referees, the officiating people are actually human beings, and the noise and the shakara would overwhelm them, and that would be a plus for England. If that's the case, well, when they meet Italy in Wembley, once again, <laughs> once again, let's hope that um, it's going to be tough for them. But I, I, don't, I don't see the English team beating Italy. But like everybody said, I watched the match. I didn't see the, I didn't see a penalty really. But it was a penalty, and like as if somebody's head was trying to catch somebody. Harry Kane missed the first shot, mm. and then he got the second one eventually. So. Yeah, do, you, <laughs> do, you, do you have any uh, any predictions uh, for how what the final lo will look like? It's Italy all the way. We have never seen. Um, the days of Paolo Rossi, yeah. who had to be brought up from jail to actually come and play for the Azuris, and they actually won the World Cup that year. This is the, an Italian team as good as that. You know, this Italian team is fantastic. They don't have flair. They are not too important. They are not too popular. They don't have too many adverts around them. They don't have funny hairstyles. They've come to play ball. <laughs> they, just, they just come to play football, you know? And these guys mean business. Mm. And even if they take that match, to the Queen's Palace in Buckingham, Italy will win that match. Wow, that's a, that's a very, have to, that's a so very strong, strong have to win win prediction there. So it's not coming home. Uh, this like Italian team expected. is too good to lose to England. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll Maybe we'll another team. Maybe we'll, they could we'll lose we'll to Belgium. That. Maybe they could lose to Spain. Maybe they could lose <laughs> to Germany. But this Italian team against England. Even, oh, the, even those 60,000 fans who were gathered at that stadium in Wembley on, on Wednesday. Let them play 22 players. <laughs> <laughs> really? So you don't, you don't think, you don't think uh, Southgate uh, tactically would be able to uh, read the Italian team well enough to defeat If them? you watch the Belgian game, Belgium against Italy, it took the Belgian team 90 minutes to try and break down that Italian team. And it didn't work. 90 minutes to break it down. I saw the English team play yesterday. They were overwhelmed by Denmark. They're a fantastic yes, absolutely. team. They're a fantastic team, really. That Italian team are too disciplined. If they say if the coach says stay here, they don't leave there. They stay there. And if Bonucci and Cellini play in that game, which they will, Cellini is married to Hurricane, their husband and wife. He doesn't go anywhere. Nobody. I know Hurricane is the only thing I, can, I think I get their problems. Bonucci gets married to Bukayo Saka and game over. All right. I think we need to go. It's just game over. Um, we really? just uh, pay. Um Respects to the Manchester United players and English team, Harry Maguire and Luke Shaw. Oh. Uh, if your team is uh, in EPL and you have any <laughs> players in the, in the English national team, sorry. Uh, what I would just have to. And now you're fans with Okay. But England will not win. Just saying. So, <laughs> thank you very much, Wally Scott, Anita. for thank your you fantastic much. analysis. Thank you. We'll find out indeed what happens at the end of the day if your predictions are correct. You won't beat me, though.
Oh, <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll take a break here and return to give you facts about today in history.